Welcome to Do Y'all See This? Reacts. This is Eva. And this is Nisi. And welcome back. Let's hop into our catch up. Uh, Y'all know I love to recommend my Auntie Tunes. Now I have a, it's not oldie. So it's an oldie, but goodie. So I've been listening to Sarah Perales. And the new song is I Choose You. I have no idea how to describe this song. It is completely about, you know, choosing the right person and being happy and, you know, proclaiming it to the world. But just the way she sings it is really light and airy. And it really has been helpful this week to just hear it. If you're unfamiliar with her, you are not in my age bracket (laughs) because you would know her from TikTok because she recently had a few songs go viral. One was Love Song and one was Break. If you've heard either one of those, you definitely know who she is. And I would recommend to go and listen to I Choose You. It was It's, it's a light, really good song to hear. Besides that, for my catch up, this week has just been, I feel like I'm being pulled every which way. The mister was off. I was still working. He's just sitting there like, okay, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? <laughs> Getting off work. <laughs> Just having dinner, definitely saw Wakanda. People, if you go to see a any MCU movie, stay. Stay for the credits. Just do something and wait for the end. You'll get a good, great cut scenes. This one has one. It's a game changer. Please, sit your butt in the seat. <laughs> Oh, how about you, Ev? What is your catch-up for the week? Um, so I had a really, it feels like a busy week, but I actually had a short week because of the weather. So um, <laughs> my work did actually close down early because hurricanes are still coming out at Florida. Yes, yeah, like it is horror. I don't understand how the season has lasted this long. But So I got an extra day off, so I had a shorter week. Um, it just felt busy. Like we had the election stuff. I also saw Wakanda on Friday and I loved it i think they did such a good job and i just it feels like this is a film i'm gonna have to get on dvd and be able to be like look at this film that made history right it was so good it was it was really good i think they they did a very good job of being tactful with everything that was going on Mm -hmm. of course i made the mistake of like reading certain commentary afterwards not before i know i i avoided every spoiler (laughs) but then afterwards i'm like did we watch the same movie? Because it feels like we didn't. Girl. No. Yeah. So we were able to go on the 10th and watch nice. it. So I definitely didn't have any spoilers or anything. So that's the only way I avoided it because I was online immediately afterwards. I was really looking for those messages where they say um, the movie without context. Like if somebody put up a picture, I was like, what would you put up? Like there's nothing, like yeah. everything gives everything away. So, but I really enjoyed it. It was really a good time. Are we ready to jump in? I think so. We've got a couple updates. So I guess we're going to start with those. Um, So I did want to start with, we did speak recently about Elon Musk and and the Twitter takeover. Um, We have to talk about the verification blue checks because now that anyone can pay $8 and get them, it is making Twitter just a wild, wild place to visit. A Washington Post reporter was actually able to get a, to impersonate a sitting senator. And basically he said, all I needed was $8 an extra iPhone and some creativity. And so the sitting, yeah, it's a mess. It is a mess. The sitting Senator basically goes after Elon on Twitter. And he's like, you need to fix your companies or Congress is going to. (laughs) So Senator Markey is actually on the committees that cover social media companies that cover automotive things. So under Tesla, because Tesla is currently under investigation. It's a whole thing. It's a mess over there. It's hilarious to watch. It was supposed to mean, okay, you can, everything that's going to come from this account is pretty much verified. This is that person. Um, This is their brand, whoever they are. This is officially them saying this. If you can buy it, I am whoever I want to be. Like that's literally every other social media platform. We really have to remember that this was someone who purchased something who didn't want to purchase it. You guys made this person purchase it. And then we like to believe that because the person has made so much money that they are also a genius. We got we to gotta be better than this. This man knew better than to keep asking for. And yet and still, what do we do? Not we. Y'all. <laughs> what did y'all do? Y'all made that man buy that company. And now he out here doing whatever he can like it's a fire set. Like, come on. 
Mm-hmm. And what trips me out is he was warned. Like people said, if you do this, the impersonators will come out of the woodwork. So our next update is going to be, um, so it's a little less fun. Um, President mm-hmm. Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, the 20000 10000 has been struck down or blocked by the Texas court. So if you have already applied, um, your application is in the queue. Department of Education is like, once it's unblocked and once we, like there's already people in the line to get that taken care of. Unfortunately, Mm -hmm. no one can apply anymore for that program. Um, I, yeah, what upsets me the most about this is the actual plaintiffs in this case. So the lawyers for this case call themselves the Job Creators Network. Mm-hmm. First off, yeah, let's talk okay. about that. So the two plaintiffs, one who isn't eligible at all for the $10,000, $20,000, he has the wrong kinds of loans. And then the other, he's not eligible for the full $20,000 because he didn't take out Pell Grants. So when he went to college, he wasn't poor enough to get Pell Grants. Heard, heard, okay. Now, in addition, one of these plaintiffs, although not eligible for this program, was eligible for $50,000 in PPP loans forgiven by the U.S. government. And he, I'm pretty sure he didn't sue for that. Why not something that benefited him? Why? Yes, it is so frustrating. And, and then the arguments that are coming out against this program, whenever I hear them, I just go, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Like the one is that, oh, the company's not going to make enough money, you know, coming off of, I mean, the point is not to make as much money as possible. It's to get these loans paid and taken care of. And then another, yeah. And another one is that people won't go into public service if they don't have school debt to pay off. That sounds like debtor's prison. That's what that Mm -hmm. sounds like. I'm hoping against hope that things will change. The Department of Education is already appealing the decision. So mm-hmm. it's just going to be kind of a waiting game at this point, unfortunately. I mean, honestly, I feel like we kind of saw this coming with them already altering it. It's like pretty much as soon as it came out of his mouth anyways. Then the, I shouldn't say low amount, but I feel like for the majority of people who need this, um, it's just not hitting the way they thought it was. It mm-hmm. definitely needed to be a larger amount. We needed something better. So hopefully, maybe the next wave that comes around, we'll do so- they'll do something where it's like, okay, we understand that one didn't hit. It didn't even get through. Now we're going to up it. Now these are the conditions, and this one is a better one that's suited. So, okay. So the next thing I do want to talk about is another money topic. <laughs> we have to talk about crypto. I... So we, me and Nisi have talked about crypto, <laughs> but I'm not sure we've talked about it on the show. Yeah, I, I understand so. it. I just don't trust it. Like I understand the idea of this fake, I know it's not fake money, but I just don't understand money that you can't go into a bank and pull out. Like, you know what I mean? Like I want to be able to walk in and be like, my money is absolutely there. So absolutely. I'm talking about this particular situation because um, the crypto king, I, I don't know if he gave himself that nickname or if that's just his nickname. Girl, you know he did. You know <laughs> he did. You know he did. Wow. His name is uh, Sam um, Freed, F-R-I-E-D. He lost $16 billion this week um, after FTX, uh, it dropped. So it tanked. A lot of people lost a lot of money, but $16 billion, like one person lost $16 billion because I put real money in stocks and things and people put real money into crypto. That's a lot of money. I don't like it. Um, I will say that I'm one of those people who like, if you message me on any of the social media and start talking about crypto or Forex or any of that stuff, immediate block, like immediately. (laughs) I'm going to tell you the issue I have with it. Um, one, I know it's probably my generation. I have heard of so many people who at the beginning, when they were first talking about crypto, they didn't understand exactly how much safeguarding they needed to do with these passwords and everything. And so they would just set up a portfolio and then they would have, you know, their crypto money in there and it's going up and then they would forget what the password was. Not realizing that there is no way to get back in there. I can tell you right now, I may have a bank app on my phone, 
And if I forget that password, there are certain ways to reset it. Like, I cannot fathom investing money that is hard earned. Yes, I know some people it's not hard earned only. Talk about mine. Hard earned. And then it just flutters away because I can't remember a password. Do you know how many passwords I have? Give me my money. <laughs> Like, I don't know how people are not burning down places over this crypto money. Like $16 billion. I, I'm sad to say, I don't think I'll ever see that money, that amount of money in my life to even think that I had the access to it. And now it is gone. I don't know how he's, how he's making it through the day. We should put him on walk, maybe on a prayer list, a prayer line, uh, because I would need to be watched carefully. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of money. Uh, running into our last topic, I wanted to celebrate, I guess, in a ways. It was not a red wave for election for this midterm here. And I'm very thankful of that. I understand that we did not get everything we wanted. We did not get Stacey Abrams. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, for some reason, believe that Atlanta is Georgia and not realize that Atlanta is Epic in Georgia. Yes, it is huge for Black people in Atlanta, but it is still it's still a red state. I think a lot of people misunderstood that she does have a lot of following and there is a huge push behind her, but did not show up completely for her. Just in the hopes of, you know, oh, she's got people, it's definitely going to happen this time. And it didn't. And I sad to say, because I really do think that this will have been the better for that state. Also, Trump out here saying if it had been a red wave, then, you know, he gets all the credit. But if it isn't, then he deserves none of the faults. Sir, that is not how it works. <laughs> that is not how it works. We, we don't want you in the paint at all. So please step aside. It was not your wave this time. Now the Republican Party is like, oh, maybe we'll distance ourselves. Can you imagine that this is what took for them to distance themselves away from him not all this nonsense not his um term none of that and also Candace owns go back over there stay with your people all skin folk ain't kin folk remember that because that's how you've been acting all this time sorry I had a little rant <laughs> no I mean all of those things correct the thing about his statement is it's not a new statement from him he said the mm -hmm. exact same thing about COVID. he was like if it works if these things you know make it are good then yes that's all me but if it doesn't work i'm not taking any of that credit i'm not taking any of that blame it's not surprising um mm -hmm. the candace owens thing is also not surprising <laughs> i she's just she's been herself this whole time i just wish you would stay yourself like stay over there I will say the one thing I was very surprised about is the the Ralph Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker is going to a runoff. So it did go yeah. to a runoff. It just feels like we're not watching the same election. <laughs> How? Can't be. Can't be. Can't. Be. I'm. I am hoping some of the political pundits say it's going to be harder for Walker in the runoff because he won't have a lot of the election push. Like there won't be as mm -hmm. much of that going behind him. So yeah. I'm. I'm hopeful we, we stay positive up in here but yeah. it's just it's one of those things where it's like how did it even get there here like how did how is this even an option another missed opportunity was um i, I know i'm about to say the name wrong is it Beto? oh yes B um beto but yes yeah guys we've got to do better um I'm glad a lot of people showed up for midterms but we just got to be consistent mm -hmm. uh, we got to remember that every election is it means something. Um, they yeah. wouldn't fight so hard for your vote if it didn't mean something. I promise you, I promise Correct. you. Correct. I want just one last thing. So one of the things I have said recently is that the Democrats sometimes lose like the momentum because they try to be the like the nice party. Yeah, they, they try to be your... kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things is sometimes there'll be a candidate who like is like, I'm a Democrat, but I'm not nice. So and there, in that case, we have uh, John Fetterman out of Pennsylvania, who mm -hmm. basically ran on a campaign of, I'm not perfect. Like, I've got, you know what I mean? But that guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, everywhere he went, his campaign, like, it was not, he was not like, I, I, I you know, we disagree on some things, but blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. No, he literally ran on, Dr. Oz is a douche, and he does not... <laughs> 
Dr. Oz. So you should not vote for him. And I think we should take that as a lesson and start doing more of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree. I, I'm i sorry. When Democrats get in, they always want to reach across and let's, oh, let's work together or this, that, the other. Republicans get in there and be like, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing. And y'all get on board because it don't matter because we going ahead. Like, come on, we had to, De Democrats got to get in there and do the same thing. I understand we shouldn't be, we don't want to be seen as ruthless and messed up or whatever. But sometimes you just gonna have to steam head. Like, come on, guys, you got, we got to do better. Yeah. But we want to thank everyone for coming to this uh, political debate with us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for this, uh, do y'all see this reacts? We have really enjoyed ourselves this week and we will see you. Are we coming back next week? Or are we still, we taking that as part of the break? Oh, that's, that's break. That is our break. So we are having a break. So on the 7th, will be the next do y'all see this react so when we come back the current episode is going to be our thanksgiving episode over on anchor we'll have um, that episode out for you and because it will be the only one you'll hear until the 5th of december so we will be back then but thank you for catching up with us and we will see you in a few weeks bye bye